Hello my friends and peers here at home and abroad. I hope you're doing well today. In this lesson we're going to show you how to build your own custom analog clock in ActionScript 3.0 using just 13 lines of code. Unbelievable! And this lesson comes courtesy of a request from Brett Bon Rose who two days ago asks Sir Adam how are you like I, I'm a knight around the round table that's really cool thank you can you share me the code action script in Adobe Flash CS3 how to make a wall clock a circle clock let's get right to it okay Brett I'll be using Adobe Flash professional CS 5.5 but you can use your CS3 you can use CS4 you can use CS5 you can use CS 5.5 you can use CS6 you can use CS 6.5 you can use CS 6.5.2.7. You can use CS 87.3.7.5.2. You can use CS 1203.3084.372. Whatever, whatever Flash version they come out with that works out with ActionScript 3, you can use that one, okay? Now let's click on Create New ActionScript 3 File. Now I already have my clock face ready in Fireworks, and I shouldn't have to show you guys how to design a clock face. So here in Fireworks, I'm going to press Control C, go back to Flash. I'm going to press Control V, and it's going to import to the stage. I'm going to import as bitmaps to maintain appearance. You can also keep all paths editable. That way, if the file is scaled or anything like that, they won't lose image quality or whatever. And I'm going to make my canvas a little bit bigger. That way, everything fits in there real good. There we go. So what I will show you how to do is create the hands, the minute, seconds, and hour hands, and then I'll show you how to program those using ActionScript 3.0 to where it runs just like an analog clock. Now what I'll do is highlight this object, right click it, go down and select convert to symbol, and I'm going to make it a movie clip symbol. I'm going to make the registration the very center dot. Press OK, and I'm doing this so I get a clear view of what the exact center is of my clock face when I go to put my hands there or you can just draw out a spear or something and make sure you place it in the exact center or you really don't even have to do that you can just put the hands where it seems like it's at the center and it'll be at the center so what I'm gonna do is create a new layer I'm gonna name that AS3 and this one graphic elements and if you wanna nest all of this inside of its own movie clip to where it has its own little timeline and everything that's just fine. That way you can move your clock around within maybe a full flash website or something more easily and the code will run independently within that movie clip. Let's lock the ActionScript 3 layers so we don't accidentally put any graphic elements on that layer. And now let's create the first hand by dragging out rectangle primitive and I'll start with making the second hand. So I'll make this black so it shows up really good and I actually look exactly like that right now. I'm wearing these big giant 1980s disc jockey uh, headphones with the little Bobby Brown it's my prerogative microphone on it I got that half-baked look on my face alright so this is gonna be the seconds bar or the seconds hand I don't want it so wide so I'm gonna drag this and make it skinnier here maybe that looks good to me and it definitely won't be so high it really doesn't matter you can actually manipulate it after you turn it into a movie clip which is what we're gonna do now so right click it convert to symbol this is going to be a movie clip symbol and be sure that you make the registration top center. Press OK. Now let's give that an instance name of second underscore hand underscore MC. That's our second hand movie clip. Now I'm simply going to highlight this and I can see where my center point is here and I'll move this over to that to where the registration point for the second hand matches the registration center registration point for this circle. Okay, so that looks like a good enough match for me. I think it's dead center. Now I know I know I don't want this so high. I only want it to come to maybe about right there, at the bottom of his feet maybe. So I'm gonna adjust the height on that movie clip to go right about maybe there. Now with it still selected, I'm gonna press Control C, Control Shift V. Now I have a new one sitting right on top. And I'm gonna name this one Minute Hand underscore MC and that's how we'll communicate to that one in the code just like we'll communicate to the second hand in the code using its instance name now this one we want to make it a little wider because this is going to be the minutes hand so let's make it about like that and then the height of this one we want to make it a little bit longer than the second hand 
Because on most standard clocks, you'll notice that the minute hand is a little bit longer than the second hand. So we'll make it actually touch the clock face markers there. And if you like, you can use different movie clip symbols. You can you notice that I'm using the same symbol in copying and pasting. And I'm going to do that one more time. Control C. I'm going to copy the minute hand now. Control C. Control Shift V. And I'll name this one hour underscore hand underscore MC. Now this one I want to make short because you'll notice on most standard clocks that these are shorter and wider than the rest. So let's make it a little bit wider, maybe about right there, and let's make it shorter maybe right there. Alright, so now you have all three hands that you need. The hours, the minutes, and the seconds is under the minutes. And actually if you want to be able to get to the seconds you can just put the minutes to the back by selecting it and pressing control shift down arrow key. Well if you do that then you have to do that to this too. Control shift down arrow. That way you can select the hours, seconds, and the minutes hand. And they're all stacked up nice. And if you want to separate them on layers, you can also do that to make getting to them more easy and locking certain ones while you work on other ones. Okay, we got the design and all the graphic elements in place. So now let's go up to the ActionScript 3.0 layer and program this thing to work. Highlight that keyframe and you can go up to Window, Actions, or just press F9 on your keyboard. The first thing we'll do is create a couple of variables and get them initialized. First one is going to be called Now and that's going to be an instance of a date object. The next line we'll type in var ct and that's short for clock timer. I thought that would be a fitting name. Timer equals new timer and you'll notice in Flash CS 5.5 that it automatically throws in any imports you might need for external coding. But since I'm not doing externally I'm actually here on the timeline I don't need that. So I'm gonna get rid of that. You'll notice that this application runs without that, if you're on the timeline. If you're using class files, you have to use those imports. So now I've created a new timer object with a one second ticking. So if you wanted this to tick every five seconds, you would put a five there. Since this is milliseconds, we put 1,000 if we wanted to tick every one second. Now the next line down, we're going to type in CT and add an event listener to this object. Add event listener. And this listener is going to be for the timer event. So we'll type in timer event dot timer all caps comma space and the function that we want to fire off when every second ticks. So we'll name that on tick. Close your parentheses, put in a semicolon, and the next line down we'll type in ct dot start. And this will actually start your timer up ticking every one second. Now all we need is the function on tick. So we'll get this function set up to execute some code that's going to affect those hours, minutes, and the second hands. And this function goes along with the event colon timer event. Close your parentheses and you type in colon void since we're not going to get any return values from this function. It's just going to run some code that's going to affect the graphic elements that are on stage. This one, which is our hand underscore MC, and then the minute hand and the second hand also. So inside this function on tick that's going to be firing off every second is where we're going to affect those. And we're going to be affecting the rotation properties of those elements on stage. Now the first thing we're going to do inside of this function is alter the value of that now variable, which is the instance of this date object, remember? So what we can do is just signify new date here. That way every second it'll get a new value for what the time and date is that second. Now we're going to create variables, one for the seconds. I'm just going to name that S, to keep things simple. Colon, and this is going to be uint is equal to now dot get seconds. So we are running the get seconds method on the now object to get whatever the exact seconds are for this exact time and date. I'm just going to highlight that whole line since it's going to be very similar for the minutes and the hours. So let's just change this to M, change this to H. Let's change this to get minutes and this one get hours. Let's remove that I. There we go. Alright, we're almost done. So first thing I'm going to do is affect the second hand. So let's type in second underscore hand underscore MC dot rotation property. 
is going to be equal to 180 plus, and in parentheses here, we're going to group this little expression to read seconds times 6. This is a grouped equation. It's going to give you a value of seconds times 6, whatever the dynamic get seconds is giving you at that moment, or at that second rather, times 6. And 180 will be added to that. So it's really 180 plus whatever that grouped equation gives you. Now, the rotation that we're going to set on the minutes hand is going to be very similar. So we can just grab that and type in minute hand underscore mc. Rotation is equal to m times 6 over here in this group plus 180. Now for the hours hands, it's a little bit trickier and a little different, but we can still take that line and copy it, put there. And we'll put it, we'll put hours underscore hand underscore mc dot rotation is equal to 180 plus h for hours times 30 here. Then you want to have one more little grouped expression for the minutes times one half. We'll put m times 0.5. So as long as you understand that every second, this S, M, and H for seconds, minutes, and hours, it's going to be dynamically changing every second. As long as you understand that and you understand basic mathematics, you'll have no problem wrapping your head around the mathematics we have going on here for the rotation. Now let's press Control Enter to debug and check. Oh, I failed to put a instance name on my hours hand. Oh, I see. I put hours here. I'm going to leave that in the video so you guys see me messing up. Okay, now let's press Control Enter. And there you'll see it picks up the correct time. And all of your hands are set correctly. If you gave them the proper registration point for center. And if you want, you can put a little round sphere there. Just put a little circle there. That'll look like a knob or something sitting on top. There we go. I got a little circle on top there. And I'm going to highlight these three items here by holding shift as I select them highlight all three of those and I'm gonna go down to the filters here I'm gonna give it drop shadow I'm gonna make sure the distance is not very far maybe like two you can distance your shadow however you want that's if you want to even add it the blur I'm gonna bring down to about one or two and the strength I'll bring down to about 30 now I'll press control enter see what I got that's nice Looks good. Works good. Okay, my friends. I'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed this lesson.